try the manual mode. Alright guys, welcome back to video 3 of the DIY 8-speed swap. Um, in this video, we will be uh, finishing up the cooler lines, getting the fittings uh, put into the side of the, the transmission for the cooler lines, um, messing with tuning on the PCM module, and uh, essentially getting everything buttoned. I did take out this uh, cross member and I did weld on the uh, B plate that's from Jeep Speed Shop. I'll also go over the routing of the 392 JL cooler lines for the transmission. Those work really nice. Only slight modification. Only had to make slight modifications to the exhaust. If I do have one, uh, one little tip. If you're gonna use these uh, flex uh, pieces, flex piping, um, I just learned close to the uh, exhaust pipes. Um, yeah, they were leaking pretty bad. So. Uh, had to cut those out and add some piping in its place. So hopefully that helped take care of all the exhaust that I was having. On top of that, I uh, also wrapped my exhaust. It gets pretty close to the transfer case and the transmission gas tank so I kind of want it to be uh, extra protected to keep all those uh, components extra protected from the heat. Just want to give a big shout out to uh, Jeep Speed Shop for all their advice, all their guidance, all their information that they uh, give on their Facebook group. Um, they've just been a real big hand and also everybody on that Facebook group has been uh, quite a big hand. Um, also we all know uh, Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets. Uh, his uh, DIY Hemi swap. That was a, uh, a big inspiration for my Hemi swap. So just want to give a shout out to Ben also. Thank you, Ben. And Todd and Liz at Jeep Speed Shop. Also a uh, shout out to Tony over at Sand Shark Custom. Um, he's got a very good DIY tutorial also on the Hemi swap. Um, so if you haven't checked out their channels, go ahead and check it out. Overall, I'm very excited to really see how this 8-speed uh, does with this uh, 392 Hemi. So, let's uh, get to it. Alexa, what's the upstairs temperature? The upstairs temperature is 80 degrees. Alexa, what's the garage temperature? The garage temperature is 77 degrees. And then we were able to get our fittings. So we did receive those. So the first thing we're gonna do is prep for uh, insertion of them. I'm just gonna take a little bit of brake cleaner just to clean out the actual tapped holes. All right, then we're gonna take some brake cleaner. And just clean off the fittings. Then we can take off this little O-ring here. All right, now that you got the uh, the ports cleaned off, I'm using a uh, an actual thread sealant, a high temp thread sealant. But before I use that, I'm also using a uh, surface prep, or it's a thread sealant activator. This stuff right here. Here I'm gonna be applying the thread sealant. the actual fittings.
Just like that, the fittings are placed and ready for the cooler lines. On the HP70, the air vent, the breather hose, it goes straight up. I had to uh, modify the body just a little bit to give it some more room up there. That way I didn't hit the body of the transmission or the motor uh, flexed a little bit. All right, so here we have the Jeep Speed Shops B plate. Then we have the stock Jeep transmission mount. And then we have the Dodge Ram 4x4 transmission mount adapter. Um, the only modification I had to make for the stock Jeep plate was I had to, there's a uh, stud that goes through here. I had to cut it right here. I had to cut it off. And then I had to drill a new hole here just to put an extra bolt there. Um, I used the two original studs. So if you're looking from the back towards the front, the, uh, the offset stud I had on the driver's side, and I cut that off. The B plate, there wasn't really, I couldn't find any good instructions online on orientation, so I kind of had to figure out what's, which was the best way. Um, if you look here, we've got the notches on the or back side towards the rear, and then the bolt is closest to the edge that's on the driver's side. On the passenger side, there's a little bit more space on the edge. That's the way I put it. I still had to drill a hole through here. On the other side, I was able to use two original bolt holes, but I still had to drill another hole. So I still had to drill two holes into this plate. Um, I might just be uh, do what's faster. It's so universal that you might have to just adapt it or make it fit the way, however you need to. I only have the uh, 1310 drive shaft, but I still had to clearance out this uh, original Jeep bracket a little bit. I was flexing the drive shaft around just to see you know, make sure it wouldn't get close to it. And it was getting close to here. You can see I notched out a little bit on the, the actual uh, transmission uh, mount. And then to help with clearance, I added some washers in between the transmission uh, mount adapter and the actual transmission mount on these two holes right here. So let's get these transmission lines mounted up. These lines are out of a uh, 392JL. So they should fit pretty, uh, pretty nicely. So if you're doing these 392 JL lines, they factory from the factory, they go straight forward at the way end, where this would go kind of right into the radiator. Um, I've got my uh, alternator in the stock location for the 392 out of the Charger, the Challenger. Um, the JL probably has the alternator up on top. So these probably work if you have your alternator relocated. But if you didn't relocate it, then you need to carefully bend the tube to go straight up. Right outside. And so instead of bending this last bend, it just kind of needs to go straight up. Nice thing about these uh, factory JL lines is they have all the brackets bolt right up to, uh, to the transmission, the bell housing, the oil pan. Makes it nice.
Here's the original routing of the transmission cooler lines coming up before the oil filter adapter. From underneath the Jeep, the lines connect there. They come across nice and tight. They bolt into the uh, dust pan, structural dust cover. Bolt into an oil pan bolt. And then that is where they go up. Attach to where my adapters are. So it's very nice and tight. routing of my transmission cooler lines. They adapt right here to a half inch hose attached to the JL cooler line. And then they just go straight down. And then I had to bend right here a little bit because it was kind of going forward where I needed to go up. All right guys, it is time to fill up the eight speed. What I'm using is uh, I've seen online recommended from uh, you know online uh, Max Life ATF. It says it's good for the uh, 8 HP 70s or the ZF eight speeds. So we will uh, we will see. It's definitely a lot cheaper. We've got a little bit of a different setup here. I'm gonna take out the drain plug. What I have here is just my fluid, the hose, and then I've got air pressure. And this hopefully will work to get fluid into the transmission. So I switched to a little bit bigger hose. All right guys, I'm getting ready to start it for the first time. Um, I've already flashed the, the, the tuner. I had to get a uh, calibration set for my PCS module. That way I could only, or only need to use the canvas settings, the canvas wires. So I put that on. Let's get ready for a start. Started, but it wasn't wanting to shift. I'm gonna go add more fluid. All right, so I got the transmission uh, filled. Kind of went through the fill procedure that is online. Um, I would follow that. I'm not an expert at uh, ZF transmission, so um, I'll post a link to a good video. And uh, Jeep Speed Shop has uh, their Facebook page has got a lot of good information on filling. Um, Yep, I, uh, I did end up having to connect the brake switch. That way uh, the transmission sees that the brake is going through the actual brake switch under the dash. Um, other than that, I, I did lift up the rear end. That way I could uh, put it in drive, let it get a little bit of speed, go into second gear, give it a little bit of speed. Um, that way it kind of, that's part of the fill procedure they say. So, so here we go.
little nervous, but we're gonna start it up and see if we can go for a little test drive.
GPS uh, module for the controller. Um, so that shows me exactly what gear I'm in. It shows me if my torque converter's locked up. Um, that kind of shows me basically the things you need to know. Um, a little bit better than the PCS software. It shows you the actual gear. Um, so far I gotta figure out how to get it to show the gear on uh, the dash here. Um, I really like that the uh, temperature gauge works on the dash. So it shows you the exact temperature on there. So that's really cool. Overall, I am happy. I'm still going easy on it, breaking everything in, letting the transmission kind of learn, learn that it's in the Jeep, kind of learn how to react. Um, I don't want to drive aggressively and make it learn that way. Um, just from everything I've seen online. So, yeah. But uh, overall, I would call this job um, pretty much done. Hey, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to message me, leave a comment, and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. I was just at work, okay? I was only at work. What are you trying to say? Don't be so mean. What are you being mean for?
Dakota. Do you miss mommy? You miss mommy? You miss mommy, Coda. Thank you.